Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I want to talk about how compassion works. Okay, now if we go straight over to Google and we do a what is compassion, it'll come up and it actually says dictionary.com, so I'm quoting it here. Dictionary.com says sympathetic pity or concern for the suffering or the misfortune of others. Okay, so during my NDE, near death experience, when I died in 2001, when I stood before the big three, those three high council or whatever you want to call them, I got told by them, do not judge. So when I was going through all my memories, I actually had to show compassion for what I did in the past and what others did to me in a non-judgmental way. So how can we be more compassionate people? Um, so let's go there with a couple of instances, okay? I've got these lovely neighbours. They fight all day, they scream, They, the police are always there, there's ambulances always there because they physically bash each other up all the time. So about three days ago they were having this massive fight and I thought, damn it, you know, I work on the computer every day. I need to go and find out what's going on today. So I walked across the road. They're across the road and two houses up. That's how much they affect me because where they are. And I was standing on my side of the footpath and I observed the male. He picked up a toy bike, one of their kids, because they've got kids, three kids. He picked up one of these little bikes, you know, a little bicycle that kids drive, ride around on. And he physically threw it at the girl, the woman. She went down on the ground. He came over and started kicking her in the belly while she was on the ground. So I yelled out, hey, to let them know there's a witness. And I thought, this is a very, very good opportunity for me to not judge them. So I walked across the road, nice and calmly, and he looked at me like, <laughs> like this big um, ape, I'll just say big ape, <laughs> big gorilla type thing. And I said, honey, come over here. See my tone? Honey, come over here. I call everybody honey, by the way, or darling, or sweetheart. So he came over to me and I put my hand out like this. And I said, honey, calm down. What's going on? And he started bawling his eyes out. And then she got up off the ground and she was like looking. And I said, come over here, darling. Come over here. I ended up holding both of their hands. And I looked into the eyes of these poor people. She told me, she's only 19. And he told me that he's 20. And they've got three children. Instantly, I was filled with compassion. I said to them, guys, it's a nasty world we live in now. Try and work it out that you two are a team. You're not fighting each other. You're doing this collective as a team. So I ended up talking to them for about 10 minutes and they really calmed down and they actually gave each other a hug and said sorry. And I said, how do you think your children feel? Do they need to see this from their parents? So I came home and I walked inside and I looked up at the sky because I talked to her all the time. And I said, did I just do enough? And the words I heard was, nothing is enough. That's what I heard. Nothing is enough. So whatever that means nothing is enough we all go through our lives guys we all get traumas griefs stresses mental health and it's when we can look at somebody else and we can put ourselves into their shoes and like that perspective that I saw in my near-death experience become that other person and try and understand what they're going through 
We don't need to know their whole life story, any childhood abuses that they got, any parental neglect or teachers, other kids bullying them. We don't need to know any of their story. We don't need to find that out. But just try to understand that everybody is having it rough at this point. Everybody's going through some bad stuff, right? And when you can sit there and you can say to yourself, you know what, I do feel sorry for what they're going through because I put myself into their shoes, these two young kids, because they're still young kids. And I looked into their eyes and I saw their pains from their face and I thought these poor kids don't know any better so I offer them the hope that they will change that they will see other ways of dealing with each other I give them that hope that they realize their actions do cause reactions in others yeah I also hope that these kids at some point learn how to deal with all the struggles of finances living by themselves in a house with their own three children and regarding the three children I think I hope that they learn the morals and the values and the rights and the wrongs that they want to instill into their own children so their children don't become them in the future and once we sit here and we say wow those poor kids are only doing what they know with their limited information how can they possibly know anything different I don't know their situations where they came from or who they're from what they've done in their lives I don't need to know but I still offered them that understanding that they were only doing what they could with the information at hand. Wow. So now I want to go to a different example. Now some people are going to think I'm weird. Wait till you hear this one. Because this is the reason why I'm doing this video today. And people are going to think, wow, I thought she was already weird. Wait until you hear this one. This morning, Mary, my cat, was inside. And I opened the door to let her out. And this huge fly came straight in. It's like they sit there waiting for the screen to open so these flies can just fly in the house, yeah? You know the story. You open your screen and it's straight in. It's like they're sitting there revving their engines to get in through the door. So this huge fly came into my house. So I got Mary outside and I had a coffee and I rang somebody and by this time I'd forgotten about the fly. So I came inside and I was in my kitchen and this fly is... So I thought, damn it, I've got to kill it, right? So I got out the bug spray and I had a tea towel. <laughs> I thought, right, where are you, you little sucker? You're dead. Because that's what we'd all think, yes? Thankfully... I couldn't find it thankfully I couldn't find it so I ended up sitting in the lounge room and I was writing some notes for some other stuff that I've got to do and then all of a sudden I hear this and I looked up and on my windowsill I've got a cobweb and there's this fly stuck in the cobweb it was injured it was scared it was hurting so I thought, oh my God, this poor fly. I've got an option, yeah? I could get a tissue and squish it and flush it because it won't be the first time I've done that. But I got the tissue and I thought, you know what? Let this fly go. So I picked it up gently in a tissue and I took it outside where I sit outside and under my pergola. And this poor fly was covered in cobwebs. So as I was holding this fly in my hand and I'm like scraping the <laughs> fly, the cobweb off this poor fly, it started to walk up my finger. And then it looked straight at me. And, it, you know, if you've ever seen a fly, they have like 10,000 eyes in each eye because they have all these little pixel things, right? 
And I was thinking, wow, what do I look like to this fly? Is he scared? All of a sudden I realised this guy wasn't scared anymore. He was thankful that I helped him. So this little fly, well it wasn't a little fly, it was quite a big one. He's sitting on my finger and he just won't go. He's walking up and down my hand, he's walking all around, he's in my, you know, as he's walking around my fingers, I'm moving my fingers around so I let him walk on my breast. So I thought, my God, I'm going to get a photo of this fly because I want to do a video and show you. So here is the fly on my hand crazy hey there he is he's walking all over my head there he is again and there he is again he was sitting on the tip of my finger and there he is again this little fly and look then he sat on my nails because I've got my red nail polish on look he's sitting on the edge of my finger look he sat there for the longest time for me to take photos and I thought, my God, this guy is so cute. Now, I've just scrolled through another three photos. And there he is again. He's still on my finger. This fly. So I learned a very, very valuable lesson today about an insect. I could have easily killed... Oh, there he is. Look at him, his little fly. He had all little cobwebs all through his legs. So I had my finger and I was scraping off the, the cobwebs off his legs. And he was just so happy to just sit on me. Look at that. Little fly sitting on me. So I left him outside when I thought, oh yeah, I've got enough cobwebs off him. And I came inside and I thought, geez, I hope he's going to be okay. Because now I've got that connection to this little insect. It's, I was going to kill it. And then I thought, my gosh, compassion. I sympathised with the struggle or the suffering or that misfortune that that fly was going through. You know, flies only live for about, what, three days? Let him go and enjoy that three days. You know, we live for... Uh, uh, you know, I just read a story, someone lived till 120 these poor little insects only get three days. So I do try to strive to walk the talk that I talk about, guys. You know, I'm the first to admit when I make mistakes and I've killed heaps of flies in the past. But today I learned a very, very valuable per um, lesson about compassion because I emphasize, em em not emphasize, I was empathetic towards that fly. I showed sympathy, sorrow, and ultimately I showed compassion. And all these things accumulate to what some people would say is the grace of God. Big words from Linda today, isn't it? So guys, you know, when you go through your normal lives, everything has a consciousness. Your clothes, your car, your furniture, um, the road that you drive on the trees in your front or backyards or the, um, any trees, plants they all have a consciousness so be kind to everything go out and hug a tree or I've got plants outside my front door so as I walk past I just put my fingers down their leaves and I give out that intention thank you for being here because that's showing compassion, kindness, and most of all, love. Because if there's something the world needs desperately now, is that understanding that we're all going through bad times. Everybody is struggling, both mentally and physically. We're confused, we're frustrated, which leads to anger, and domestic violence and suicide. So guys, take a step back. Breathe in really slowly. 
pause and say, what can I do even facing these adversities? What can I do to be compassionate? It doesn't mean that you have to ring a long lost friend and say, oh my God, I'm really sorry if I ever abused you. We don't have to go to that extreme. But today I did something whereby my heart was pulsing out of my chest and I felt that pride, that joy, that exhilaration, that one little measly insect was going to go off and have a good day as a result of my con- the consequences of what I did for it. So guys, it doesn't take big things to appease the heavenly lessons. A simple smile at a stranger, asking someone if they're okay, helping someone when they fall down instead of laughing at them and saying, ha ha, look at you. Run over to them and say, oh my God, are you okay? Because if we show that sympathy and we show that concern, Ultimately, those vibrations are spreading out to everybody on the planet. And soon, the majority of the people won't be so angry. Because now, we're understanding the other perspective. Everybody is just trying to do their best. So try and remember that, guys. Everybody's trying to do their best. And when you, understand, when you comprehend they're only trying to do their best, they're only trying to do their best, that fly was only trying to do its best, yeah? Then that's how we show compassion. That's how we strive to be angelic. And ultimately it aligns our soul back in to where we're from. So I hope that you've liked today's video, guys, about compassion. Go out and be compassionate. Google what is compassion. And ask yourself, do I do this often enough? Do I want to be the person who does this more? And I hope the answer is yes. Talk to you next time, guys. Have a good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever you are. Thanks for watching. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.